Are anyone really keeping tabs on what's happening here? You're in for a ride. my channel my name is Gita Marie and today is time for another impact analysis I know it's been it's been ages I've been looking so much forward to getting back into the deep dives it is one of the parts of my job that I like the most so why not get started with one of the topics that I have been asked to do I think the most, maybe because I myself am pretty well tattooed. We're going to talk about the environmental impact of tattoos today. We're going to venture into a little bit of an historic overview as well as some health related topics because they're really hard to separate and I think we deserve the whole picture. So we're going to gather all these thoughts in one video and talk about some of the available data as well. But before we do that, we have to go back a bit. Tattooing is an ancient practice and overall the industry has changed a lot. It has first and foremost become an industry, which wasn't always the case. The methods with which we now make tattoos have changed, but the act of getting permanent markings on your body to signify, to celebrate, to mourn or to communicate has been a part of the human experience since always. In 1999, high in the Italian Alps, a 5,300 year old body surfaced from melting ice. Oesti the Iceman he was called and his skin bore 61 tattoos, simple lines and crosses burnt in with ash and soot. And half a world away in ancient Egypt and Nubia, women were tattooed around their bellies and thighs and breasts, not only to decorate and to celebrate, but also to protect. And from the Antes to the Arctic in Siberian burial rituals, island across the Pacific and deserts in the Middle East, the story repeats itself. Tattoos appear where people have lived. To some, tattoos are sacred. In Polynesia, for instance, where the word tattoo originally came from. As in many other cultures, the ritual of getting your tattoo was long and painful and deeply symbolic. And contrastingly, in other parts of history, tattoos were used as punishment. In ancient Rome and Greece, criminals, slaves and prisoners were forcefully marked. A tattoo could brand you to signify to others that you do not belong here. It was stigma, literally. The Latin word stigma means a mark, a wound, a label. A tattoo. And when Christianity spread across Europe, it tried to erase the practice of tattooing entirely. Tattooing was declared pagan and sinful. It was tied to what in Central Europe was deemed uncivilized cultures. In some places, it disappeared underground for centuries. And then came the age of exploration. When James Cook sailed to Polynesia in the 18th century, for a while there, tattoos became a domain for sailors and soldiers. Sailors could earn tattoos through their work, like a swallow originally meant that you traveled 5,000 nautical miles. But for most of the 19th and 20th century, tattoos belonged to the fringes, to the navy, to the circus, to the criminal underground. Tattoos marked those who lived outside the rules and had no interest in coming back in. Today, tattoos are nearly everywhere. One in three Americans wears at least one tattoo. And the reasons haven't really changed. People still use tattoos to remember and to belong and to heal. And I'm right there with you. But while we could gush about the art of tattooing or the cultures behind it, or we could even talk about the health aspect, one of the topics when it comes to tattooing that's often left out is the environmental impact. In my much more hardcore zero waste days where you know all plastic was the sinner, that is ironically where I got the majority of my tattoos. Whereas now that I have perhaps a little bit more of a relaxed or nuanced relationship with my personal impact and understanding my personal impact, understanding that 100% perfectly zero waste is an insane goal, but any kind of reduction and conscious consuming efforts are completely valid. Now, when I feel much more relaxed about it, I haven't gotten a tattoo in years. <laughs> so that's great. As someone who's passionate about sustainability and my own impact, it begs the question, what is the environmental impact of my tattoos? Let's start with tattoo inks. Tattoo inks are made of, of two different types of components. They're made from carriers and pigments. The pigments give the tattoo inks the desired colors and the carriers are the elements that keep the inks 
staple. And let me tell you now, if you saw the impact of nail polish video that I did and thought it's extremely hard to navigate all of these ingredients, are anyone really keeping tabs on what's happening here? You're in for a ride. So trying to come up with any universal statements about the controlling and restrictions of tattoo ink is basically impossible because it differs vastly how many restrictions and what kind of legislation tattoo inks has to follow depending on where you are in the world. I live in Denmark, which is in the EU. And in the EU, we have quite strict rules when it comes to what kind of ingredients can be used in cosmetic products. Two inks fall under that category as well. A 2016 report found that hundreds of pigments and additives are used in tattoo inks. And keeping track of those is incredibly difficult. And that's in the EU. It wasn't until three years ago in 2022 that the FDA in the US started regulating tattoo inks. That was when tattoo inks started being categorized as a cosmetic product, which meant that now the FDA could control the ingredients of it. But before then, it was completely unregulated. And perhaps you're not surprised at all. But globally speaking, tattoo inks are incredibly untransparent with their ingredients. A team led by John Suig at Bingham University found that 90% of tattoo inks in the US were mislabeled, some with unlisted pigments, allergens or harmful additives. And this was in 2024. And of course, unmarked, unlisted or mislabeled ingredients is not only a major health issue, it also poses environmental questions, both when it comes to the production of these inks as well as the use phase and disposal of them. I think when we're looking at the impact from a groundwater pollution, soil pollution perspective, it makes sense to look at the production phase and the production impact of tattoo inks. However, there's very, very, very little data actually available on this. Some tattoo inks contain heavy metal, not that kind. Metals like lead or chromium or nickel, which not only can cause allergic reactions, but they're also deeply detrimental if they sieve out into our environment. And I don't know if you knew this, but carbon black ink is made from carbon, which means that the pigment that's used is made from incomplete combustion of fossil fuels. Yeah. Tattoo inks in many cases also contain animal products like bone char. So yes, tattoos can carry a small but measurable toxic load, especially if there's no control with how these inks are handled and used. And this is also why we're not going to get inked in a sketchy garage by someone who your friends vouched for. So we're just not gonna do that. And both your mother and a YouTuber said no. Don't go for it. And we're gonna circle back to the environmental impact more, but we have to talk about a series of studies that has been released the last five years. Because I have thoughts. There are a few of these studies out here and they basically say the same. They also reference each other and use a lot of the same source material. But this is the one I want to highlight. This study found that people with tattoos had a 21% higher risk of developing certain skin cancers. Those with larger tattoos, larger than the palm of your hand, had more than double risk of lymphoma. Okay, so in terms of how this message is being delivered, what we tend to hear when we see a headline saying something like, having tattoos will give you a 21% increased risk of certain cancers. What we hear is that if we have tattoos are now 21% likely to get cancer. And that is not what... Okay, so imagine you have a 1% chance of getting lymphoma. And with larger tattoos, if we buy the premise and the findings of this study, which we will come back to, you now have a 1.2% chance of getting lymphoma. I just feel like for overall comprehension purposes, that is an important distinction to have. Every time I see a study that has something kind of wild to say like this, like tattoos causes 21% increase in cancer. What I like to do is that I like to find criticisms of these studies from fellow researchers, from their peers, to see more context. And that's also what I found here. One of the main criticisms that I think is important to add here is that the study didn't really have a way of separating tattoo risks from other lifestyle risks and other environmental risks as well, which means that it didn't calculate for increased alcohol consumption, for smoking, for air quality. Because it was a twin study, what it was able to do is that it was able to compare two different lives and experiences that had the same genetic foundation, which can be really smart. But if you don't calculate for all the other things that come with any kind of lifestyle, and now I'm gonna generalize a little bit, but people with tattoos might like to have a drink, or might like to have a cigarette, might like to go to concerts, might live in bigger cities where the air quality is worse. You can say all these things, purely speculation, but it's important to add because all these things 
also increase your risk of cancer significantly. Sun exposures, smoking, alcohol intake are connected with much, 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 much higher risks. It's important to have that bit of context there. And that concludes tattoo inks. Another part of the impact when it comes to tattooing is the more obvious one, which is the single-use plastic aspect. The tattoo industry is pretty heavy on single-use materials. And for good reason. It's not just for shits and giggles. It's because of hygiene and safety. When you're getting a tattoo, you're basically making an open wound into someone's skin. Our skin is our largest organ and whenever we leave it vulnerable, for instance, by puncturing it a million times, we leave ourselves vulnerable to infection and bacteria. So in order to minimize a lot of these risks, we use single-use plastics, just like you would in an operating room. The main difference here is that operating rooms tend to be crucial and life-saving and important, and this is for shits and giggles. I know tattoos can also be incredibly serious, but you know what I mean. So when getting a tattoo, it usually involves the use of cling film, a plastic safety razor, plastic ink caps, needle, needle packaging, and then there are also certain types of disposables that are there to protect the artist. Because when you tattoo someone, you are creating a tiny blood mist that gets in your mouth, in your eyes, etc. So many tattoo artists wear plastic aprons and a face shield to protect themselves. One estimation that I've seen is that one tattoo session tend to generate around 100 to 150 grams of disposable plastic. And from my own experience, I think that sounds about right. Right. Of course, there are other types of impacts apart from the waste buildup. There's also the petroleum-derived carriers, which come from the fossil fuel industry. So it's all connected to oil, which, you know, is the main cause of climate change. Obviously, tattoo carriers account for a tiny, 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 tiny part of it. There is very, very little data available on how much of an impact this actually has. So I think we have to leave it at that. But it's not all bad. There are good news once in a while. Many tattoo studios are making swaps to be more sustainable, like using vegan inks without animal glycerin or bone char or shellac in it, which tend to have a lower carbon footprint. You also have biodegradable ink caps and eco razors, reusable stainless steel cups, and then there's plant-based biodegradable compostable plastic. And let me tell you, this is a little bit hard to navigate. I've even talked to tattoo artists that have the ambition of introducing some of these products and they also have a hard time navigating through this minefield and I understand why. Because both in my own research for my own tattoos as well as for the research for this video, what I've seen over and over again is that the products available that tend to be more sustainable or biodegradable or using plant-based plastic etc, a lot of it is greenwashing. I have several videos about biodegradable, compostable, plant-based plastic, so I'll leave them down below. But here's a really quick recap. You are not guaranteed that they're more sustainable just because it's plant-based plastic. Plant-based plastic tend to have a lower recycling rate because you need a completely different set of facilities to recycle plant-based plastic. And if you don't have that, and the vast majority of consumers do not, the infrastructure is not available to recycle this kind of plastic. So it will typically end up in landfill. And when biodegradable, compostable, postable plant-based plastic, typically speaking, ends up in landfill. It just does what regular plastic will do, because most of these products can only break down in very specific types of environments, also in industrial composts. For this video, one of the things that I did is that I texted my go-to tattoo artist. She has done a lot of work on my legs, and I love her insight when it comes to both hygiene, recycling, and how you handle the waste from tattooing. And one of the things that she said is that, typically speaking, the needles, of course, has to be sorted as biohazardous waste. So they cannot be recycled, they have to be disposed of as medical waste. But in terms of legislation, that's also kind of it. But there is a major problem when it comes to businesses. Now, this is the case for Denmark. Let me know how it is in your local area. But the thing is, you as a consumer, you as an individual, you are obligated by law to recycle. You get different kinds of buckets and bins and you have to recycle. You know, recycling is a good place to start. It's a bad place to stop, but it's a practice that we have have to participate in as individuals of society. Companies, however, do not. They get to have one bin. They are not obligated by any law to sort, manage or recycle any of their waste, which means that the vast majority of waste from Danish tattoo parlors just ends up with general waste. Any kind of effort to combat that would be really amazing, not just for the tattoo industry, but overall giving businesses the same obligation to participate in recycling infrastructure as individuals only seems fair. 
And this is a problem not only for tattoo studios, but for any kind of business or office. You can also look for tattoo studios that are taking steps in terms of energy conservation, as well as waste management and prevention. And I think this might be my most practical tip when it comes to getting more sustainable tattoos, other than asking your tattoo artist what kind of inks they're using and if the inks are transparent or if that is something that they value at their studio, if the inks are made with bone char or if the inks are vegan, etc. One of the things, and I think the main thing that I have done, is that I'm getting tattoos in batches. So I am spending a whole last day getting a lot of different stuff done instead of going to the tattoo parlor multiple times using single-use materials again and again and again. If you all get it done in one session, you minimize the amount of waste. And there, Bob's your uncle. Now, obviously, that only really works if you want multiple tattoos. Before my final conclusion, I have one last thought, something that I've been thinking about a lot. For this video, I typed into my search engine, what happens to tattoo ink when you die? Because now we sort of established that a lot of it is based on petrochemical components, which means that it's fossil fuel derived, which means that it doesn't go away, right? It can change form, but it doesn't just go away. So what happens when you die and go in the ground? If you're burnt, it's burnt with you. If you're buried, however, it's another story. Then as your skin decays, the tattoo ink and the components from the tattoo ink, especially so the carriers, will seep out into groundwater and soil. But this is mainly a reality if your body is not treated with formaldehyde. In that case, you really don't. Also, if you're embalmed with formaldehyde, I really wouldn't worry about the pollution and contamination from your tattoo ink as much as from the embalming. Much bigger issue, which is actually measurable. Now, here are my final concluding thoughts. Tattooing is an act of expression. It's an act of self-love. It can help you mourn someone you lost, or it can help you commemorate a special moment in your life. Either way, it's not something that I would take away from anyone or make anyone feel bad about doing because of environmental reasons. There are so many other places where we can have so much more impact than hyper-focusing on tattoos. That being said, I wish there was more pressure on the industry as well as on the manufacturers of tattoo inks. I would love for it to be easier to navigate both as an individual as well as someone working within the tattoo industry. And then I would really love to avoid this doomsday-ish kind of journalism about how dangerous tattoos are or aren't. That would definitely also be really fantastic. I think the environmental impact of tattoos is something that's definitely worth discussing because there are ways where we can make this better. But at the same time, you as an individual, I wouldn't encourage you to hyper-focus on the sole impact of your tattoo inks. I think it's good to put any industry and any product and any practice under scrutiny. I think that that is always useful, but it's what we do with that information that really counts. And this is not to punish anyone who ever had a tattoo. Is tattoos necessary for survival? Well, no, but I'm also not gonna sit here and tell you how to express yourself. I would be much more inclined to let people know that buying fast fashion every week is bad, or that we should reduce our meat consumption, or that polyester clothing might not actually be the best, or that we should switch our energy supplier and our pension fund. I would, however, encourage that we think long and hard before we get something done. If we can batch several tattoos together into one session, that's cool too. If we can find a tattoo studio that actually just cares a tiny bit, that would also be fantastic. But as someone who both has very meaningful as well as very stupid tattoos, I feel like I'm in no position to claim any kind of holier than thou position. Anyway, as someone with a spaghetti tattoo, I really don't feel like I have any say in what is wise and what isn't. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you liked it. If you did, leave me a thumbs up. That would make my day. If you want to subscribe and see more impact analysis videos, also subscribe. We're talking about all different kinds of phenomena, practices, products and materials. So if there's any kind of material you're interested in, chances are it's probably on the playlist. I'll link it down below for you to go and check out. And let me know in the comments if you have any tattoos, if you've ever thought about getting any, or if you ever think about the environmental impact. I would love to hear your take. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye.